so harassment, and that's really upfront, just insulting them. Um, and then stereotyping, which is kind of like this picture where older people don't know certain things that younger people might, but that's not true. Um, the next one is race and color discrimination, and this is when someone's treated unfavorably based on their race, or um, if they're married or associated <laughs> with someone of their race. I love the office. Um, so characteristics can be skin color, hair texture, or facial features. Uh, so the Civil Rights Act of 1964 specifies discrimination, but specifically, once again, Title VII. And Title VII, even though it's about discrimination as a whole, it really focuses on race and uh, color the most. The next one is religious discrimination. Once again, it's in the workforce if you're being treated unfavorably based on your religious beliefs, or if you're married to someone with a different religious belief, or you associate yourself with someone else. Um, so religious accommodations, it's the law to accommodate someone's religious beliefs in the workplace. Um, for example, you're allowed to wear a yarmulke. You can, they cannot tell you that you can't wear one unless it's for undue hardships. Um, other than that, they have to allow you to do uh, take vacations or holidays for religious beliefs. An undue hardship is an action requiring significant difficulty or expense. So once again, um, if your headdress or anything that you're wearing for your religion uh, affects how you work, if, you, if it's unsafe or if it costs a lot of money to have you leave, they're going to have to have you stay. But most of the time, they will accommodate you. The next one is disability discrimination and accommodations. Uh, the disability discrimination is uh, really, really strict. They have to allow you to have someone help you fill out an application if you can't fill it out, and they have to have combinations such as ramps for wheelchairs or um, elevators if you can't go up the stairs. Um, the definition of disability is much more broadened than you would think it would be, I guess. Um, there's physical and mental disability, which is the one I think everyone really turns to, but it also can be someone with a history, so cancer and remission. If you high cancer, you're still technically on disability. And um, if you're believed to have a minor impairment, that's less than six months. Uh, the next one is genetic information. Um, genet genetic information is more about genetic tests or your family medical history. Um, if you've done research and clinical research for someone, <coughs> then that counts under genetic information. It is illegal to, for an employer to ask for your genetic information or purchase any of your previous receipts for it. The GINA, or uh, Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, Title II, uh, more like specifies how an employer cannot um, ask for genetic information or prevent you from getting a job because of it. And lastly, we have sex-based discrimination. Um, this one's really broad also because it's sex as in male or female, but it also counts as gender, uh, sexual orientation. But gender and sex are not the same thing. So you have to remember that when you're thinking about that because they might not be really discriminating against you. Um, there's sex-based harassment, <laughs> once again, in the office. Uh, sex-based harassment <laughs> um, in the workforce. Sexual harassment is one thing, and that's when someone's making a move on you or advancing on you sexually. And then there's offensive remarks such as, oh, you're a woman, you can't, you can't do this, you can't lift up a box because you're a woman. Like, there are different ways that you can harass someone, but it's only harassment if you're frequently doing it. And to practice positive workforce, po uh, positive workplace, um, you can review your manual and your policies to make sure that you're abiding by all the laws, uh, encourage your workers to treat others with respect and to not discriminate, and then also train your workers to make sure that they know what they are doing. Uh, my experience, uh, I worked at, as a waitress for about four years. I still go back. I like my boss, but no one else does, and it's because he's really racist. Um, and Sexist, he's everything, he's really bad. But he <laughs> needed help looking for more employees because everyone leaves for college back at home. And somebody came in and he had a ponytail, really long ponytail and a purse, and he, you can tell that he was um, gay, or bisexual at least, and he took his application, said thank you, thank you so much, and then threw it out as soon as he left and said that he's not hiring a shim. And like that was really, like at the time I was like, whoa, you can't say that, but at the same time, he doesn't follow by those the rules, I guess. So next is Christina with Equal Pay. 
Thanks, John. So my name is Christina, and I'm going to be talking to you about equal pay today. So to start off, what is equal pay? Equal pay refers to men and women in the same workplace be given equal pay for equal work. The jobs do not have to be identical with each other, but they must be somewhat equal within each other. Um, the job content, not the job title, determines whether the jobs are equal and they should deserve equal pay for their equal work. So all forms of pay are come to, covered under the Equal Pay Act. So whether it be your salary, promotions, bonuses, um, if you travel for work, hotel and travel reimbursement, life insurance, um, vacation time, they're all covered under this act. So the Equal Pay Act of 1963 is a United States labor law that um, was amended the Fair Labor Standards Act. And this was aimed at um, abolishing wage disparity based on gender. It was signed on June 10, 1963 by President John F. Kennedy as part of his new frontier program when he was in his presidency. So if a person is charged with a violation of the EPA, they may go directly to court um, and they do not have to file under the EEOC within the violation that they have uh, committed, they, um, they will go to court within two to three years of this incident. So this is a map of the United States with equal pay provisions in 2016. And what it shows is that the two states below uh, Mississippi and Alabama, they are the only two states with no equal pay law, whereas um, the orange states work with, have weak equal pay, um, the moderate, where we are in New Jersey, um, have moderate equal pay. Um, the green are strong. Um, so hashtag 20% counts. So I was doing my research last week. What this means is it um, was started by Sheryl Sandberg, the CEO of Facebook. And what it takes a man to make in one year, it takes a woman to, year, to make in one year and 90 days. So one year and all the way up to April 4th, it takes a woman to make, which is equal to a man. Um, so the pay gap is a comparison between men and women um, with their typical earnings. So over the years, the pay gap has narrowed, um, but recently has stalled with the pay gap between men and women. Um, people believe that there is nowhere near uh, being equal pay in the future. Um, so causes of the equal of the gender pay gap are that men and women tend to choose different majors and occupations when they're in college or after college. So that's one of the causes. Also, women um, and men, once they start having a family, women are typically the ones at home taking care of the children. Um, so they need more flexible hours, need shorter hours and schedules. Um, some changes that can help close the wage gap for companies. CEOs usually are really for having equal pay in the workforce. Um, so companies urge that um, they do salary audits to ensure that there is equal pay. For individuals, Women can learn different negotiation strategies so they can negotiate their pay, um, from bonuses, promotions, to only better benefit themselves and the company. So for policymakers, um, policymakers believe that if there was equal pay within the United States, that it would only help the U.S. economy grow three to four percentage points um, in the economy, so this would be really good for not only the United States as a whole, but as the U.S. economy and for companies. Um, so disabilities, so people with disabilities are paid less than people without disabilities, and women without disabilities are paid less than men with disabilities. Um, as for sexual orientation um, and gender identity, um, this is considered harassment and discrimination in the workplace and will affect their pay. Um, as for people with higher education, as people have more education, um, experience, uh, roles in the workplace, the pay gap widens between men and women with this experience in education. So if men and women were paid equally in the workplace, um, women would be actually to use more money to for education, for themselves, for children, um, and for even groceries. If they were paid equally, men and women, women would be actually be able to buy 78 more weeks of groceries for themselves and their family. Um, on average, US women are paid 20% uh, less than men 
whereas African Americans are paid 37% less than African American men in the United States, and Hispanics are paid 47% less, which is a lot, I think. Um, so believe it or not, the pay gap starts as early as 16 years old. That's when most of us first, you first got your first job, um, part-time job, and so it starts at 16 and goes all the way up to your 65 years old when you're either just beginning your retirement or going for retirement in the future. Um, for my new and you, something new that I learned, I know I said previously that people think that <coughs> there isn't going to be um, equal pay in the future, but some people actually believe that um, 44 years or more there will be equal pay. So that will take us all the way to 2061, <laughs> which is crazy. crazy. It is if it will happen or not. Um, so I work for Kennedy Health Alliance. It's a group of doctor's offices in South Jersey. They have primary care or specialty care. Um, it's all across South Jersey. Um, something new that I learned through this process of uh, researching that men and women doctors, physicians, um, either nurse practitioners or PAs, men are paid 8% more um, than females, which I think is crazy. Um, just to recap, today I talked about equal pay, the Equal Pay Act of 1963, Hashtag 20% counts, um, the pay gap, and my personal experience. And up, up next is Shinny with the pros and cons. As we know, like uh, affirmative action actually is a government policy. Always one thing come with the bad and always oh uh, come with the good and also come with the bad as well. Like. Uh, some people thinking it's really help American to succeed. But as meanwhile, like some of more people nowadays, they think they're not really helpful now. And like it's actually applied like more opportunity for the minority, especially for women, African American and Mexican American. They got equal pay and they don't pay less. They got more opportunity to be able to work, be able to gain their knowledge and go to the college. So some people think it's not really working because like uh, like kind of like affirmative action kind of set up a rules for a company like you can only hire a certain percent of like gener like like gender or certain percent like races and also like for women like you got more of, of course good for women you got more job opportunity they got equal paid and uh, they encourage us to be able to work, go to the college, purchasing higher education. And also, we be able to like speak up for ourselves. They be able to get a job in government, be being a president or like being a leadership in one of the organization. So like and and also speak up for like our group. Back into the history, more like religious like leadership more is for men, but like after the firm de action, like some of the like religious groups like they decide to like use the woman as a leadership, like to listen what they want to say about the woman part of the religion. Also, like when you become a successful business woman, of course, you don't have time with your family, you don't have time with your kids. So they kind of like, no one take care of the kids, so no one at home, they kind of plan, like that's all you, the, all the women for, they be able to be work and no one take care of family. So come to the next, it's gonna be a gender war between man and the woman. Like you can't, no one, like man is also working and woman is also working, so who gonna take care of the kids? So like, you can't like really like equally like saying like, okay, like men supposed to be work and the woman supposed to be at home. And, but like for minority, like the good news is like they got more job opportunity. Back to history, some of the minority, they don't even get paid while they are working or like they don't even have a job. So it's apply them a job opportunity, they be able to work. And also, also it's diversity communicate. So you be able to work with the diff different people from different culture background, all like different like gender and other thing. And it's good for like a, a, a organization or a company development. 
And back to our life, this is the data from actually from Rowan website. This, and like the 